Well, hello, scrappers. Welcome back to my channel. Mike here. Now, I've been doing a series of videos on silver recovery lately. And, um, you know, I did one on getting uh, silver out of tantalum capacitors recently. I'll put a link to that in the upper right. And I've done some other silver recovery videos. And in those videos, I've showed you the uh, lye and sugar method for converting silver chloride back into silver metal, which I think produces very pure silver metal. Now, I get a lot of people in the comments on those videos telling me, no, 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 you should just be cementing the stuff out on copper. And, well, I've done that before in the past, and I have some videos about that. And, um, well, I think that uh, all my cement silver is more than a little bit contaminated with copper. Here's a, a jar of silver powder here. Most of this is from cementation on copper, okay? And I took some of this and I redissolved it into nitric acid. And I got this over here. So this is clearly contaminated with something because silver nitrate solution, pure silver nitrate solution, should be clear. I'm thinking that's pretty much copper in there, giving it that uh, greenish tint. So. I've mentioned that to conversations with a couple of people and I think that the uh, lye and sugar method gives me, you know, the silver chloride to lye and sugar method gives you much cleaner silver than the uh, copper cementation. They said, of course, well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. They said what you need to do is boil your cement silver in sulfuric acid and that will get rid of any copper contamination. Okay. Well, you know, a quick look at... Uh, about any chemistry text will tell you that sulfuric acid doesn't directly dissolve copper. Um, but I could see how it could dissolve small amounts of it if there's like a little bit of oxygen in there to help oxidize the copper up a little bit to where the sulfuric acid can get, get a hold of it. Um, so we'll give that a try. I'm not 100% convinced it's going to work, but some of my viewers are convinced it works. So we'll give that a try. So what I have here is a fairly concentrated solution of copper nitrate. As you can see, it is contaminated with copper, but we're going to cement it out on copper again. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, so I've got a, a nice, uh, clean, shiny uh, copper coil here that I'll put in there and we'll start the cementation. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to dilute this a little bit more. This is actually fairly concentrated, so I'm going to dilute this with a little bit more water, distilled water, just so it's not so concentrated. And then I'll put the, um, put the copper coil in. Um, I got my GoPro over here and I will try to capture the cementation process as it happens in slow-mo. So we'll see how that goes. And I will zoom in with this camera as the coil goes in and we will see what we will see. Okay, so let's get this cementation started. Let me get the copper coil in there. And it immediately turns silver. Yeah, so we got we got silver nitrate coming out of solution on the copper. Okay. So we'll just let that sit and see what develops over the next few hours or day or so. And uh We'll collect the silver that uh, falls to the bottom of the beaker and uh, probably boil it in some sulfuric acid and see if that seems to clean it up. Okay, so just gotta let this go. Well, it's been less than five minutes and I can already see bits of silver falling off of that coil to the bottom of the beaker. So it's, uh, it's working. It's working. The, the GoPro video should be interesting. So, uh, and I'll let it go. And the liquid's getting more blue-green as copper is going into solution as the silver comes out of solution. So, that's to be expected. So we're about 10 minutes into the cementation. Not quite 10 minutes. We've got quite a layer of silver metal accumulating on the bottom of the beaker. The liquid is turning quite blue. So this is going very well, very quickly. I uh, wrap on the table. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> so 
So, uh, yeah, it's going quite well. So, we'll just let this go, probably for at least the rest of the day. And, uh, see how much, uh, silver I can get out of this. And then start dealing with cleaning it up tomorrow, maybe. I don't know how sparkly those crystals are on there showing up on the video or not, but some of those crystals are really, really sparkly and shiny. Very cool. Very cool. And right now, the, the wire in there is about three times its original diameter with uh, silver on it. Let me wrap on the table again. Yep, there you go. Look at that. I'm getting probably half an inch of silver on the bottom of the beaker already. So, it's really coming along in there. But I know from experience that you got to let this go for quite a while because even after the fast cementation stops, this will keep going on slowly for quite a while afterwards. So I will definitely let this go until sometime tomorrow, at the very least. We've been going for not quite a half an hour. I just shook the uh, accumulated silver off the coil. Look at how thick that layer on the bottom is now. It's, it's over an inch thick. So yeah. We are getting some silver there. I'm just going to let it keep going. That's a lot of silver for only half an hour. I know there's more in solution yet. Just, as the concentration goes down, it just takes longer to uh, cement out. So, I'm going to let it go. So, here we are not quite an hour in, and the, the coils are completely covered with a thick layer of cement silver again. Now interestingly the color of the silver has changed dramatically. It's gone from very light to very dark. Now I can only assume that is a result of a difference in the size of the crystals in there. Not due to any kind of contaminant I'm thinking. I'm thinking these are just smaller crystals and they're not reflecting the light as efficiently as the bigger ones did. So I'm going to shake the coil. and expose some fresh copper and leave it going. Okay, so we're about three hours in and things have changed again. We've got these long beard-like uh, stalagmites sticking down from the uh, coil now. So you get these changes as the concentration of the uh, silver nitrate in the solution changes. Just the way it, it, it cements out over time differs. The color has lightened up again. So I'm going to shake the uh, silver off the coil again. Look at how much silver is in the bottom of that beaker. Wow. But I knew this was a fairly concentrated solution. So, got to get a lot of silver out of it. So I'm just going to stash this in the back of the fume hood and leave it until tomorrow and uh, see what we get out of it and see what it looks like then, okay? Well, it's the next day. This has uh, sat there cementing out overnight. And it looks like the reaction's pretty much done. There's just a few little, you know, tiny little snot-like stalactites hanging down from the uh, copper anymore. I'll have to shake it really well, pull the copper uh, coil out of there, shake it really well, and wash the silver off that's stuck to it. And, um... Then we can get to cleaning this stuff up. Um, I'll probably start off with uh, hot water, 
washes to just get the blue copper nitrate out of it. And then once I don't see any more color in it, then we can move on to um, more thorough, possibly, uh, cleaning with acid. So, let me get started. Okay, let's see if I can get this stuff, get this uh, out of here and get silver off of it. Oh yeah, nice shiny copper underneath that silver. Oh, there's a lot of silver stuck to it. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't help. Come on, everybody into the pool. Okay, that copper's reusable again. There's a lot of metal left on here. Okay, so there's our silver. So I'll start by just, uh, well, I'll let this settle a little bit. And then I'll decant off this blue liquid and we'll start giving it some washes. But you know, the more I think about this, the more I think that the sulfuric acid may not be a great idea. I'm going to go with dilute sulfuric acid because I'm worried that more concentrated acid, especially if it's hot, will dissolve a lot of the silver. And, you know, it's going to negate any advantage I get just by cleaning the, the copper out of this in the losses in silver. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with probably cold or at, at worst not very hot dilute sulfuric acid. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this in half. And we'll do half the silver that way. And the other half I'm going to do with hydrochloric acid. Because I know that's not going to dissolve silver. And although the chemistry textbooks will also tell you that hydrochloric acid doesn't dissolve copper either, well, again, it will if there's a little oxygen around to help the process. So, um, we'll give that a try. We'll divide this in half, and we'll do half with uh, dilute sulfuric acid, and we'll do half with hydrochloric acid, and we'll see which looks like it comes out cleaner. That should be an interesting experiment, I'm thinking. Okay. So I'm going to let this settle just for a couple more minutes and I'll start uh, decanting off the liquid and cleaning it up. Okay, so here's our silver. I have decanted off the bulk of the blue liquid. And I've got some hot tap water here. We're going to give this some hot tap water washes. And see if we can clean it up. Get rid of the bulk of the... Get rid of the any trace of the blue fluid in there. The, the blue copper nitrate in there. Give it some washes here. Let that settle and pour it off. And I'll just keep repeating this until I don't see any more blue copper nitrate coming off of it. And then probably do it one or two more times just to make sure I've got the, the vast bulk of it out. Because it is tenacious. It takes a lot of rinsing to get rid of all that copper nitrate in there. It takes a whole lot of rinsing. So I'll be back once uh, I think it's pretty clean. Well, we're a couple of rinses in. We're not quite done yet. Uh, what I've noticed is that the silver is in big clumps in here. So I'm breaking up the clumps. Because I'll bet there's a lot of copper nitrate hiding inside those clumps. You can see the liquid is still a little bit blue. So, give it a couple more rinses anyway. Probably going to take more than that even. Like I say, you want to rinse until you don't see the color anymore and then rinse it a few more times just to make sure you're getting every last trace of that stuff out of there. See, still a little bit blue. Takes a lot of rinsing. So one thing I'm not happy about with any method of silver recovery is all of the rinsing that's required. To get the impurities out of it. Whether it's uh, cement silver like this or 
silver chloride or converting the silver chloride with uh, lye and sugar there's just so much rinsing involved oh, this is starting to look clean a few more rinses and I think we'll be there I'll be back when I think it's clean enough I may have to heat up some more water and give it a couple more rinses yes yeah, still a little blue so that's not gonna get it I'm gonna have to heat up some more water so I'll be back when I think it's as clean as I can get it this way okay I think this silver is about as clean as I can get it using this method I haven't seen any trace of color for the last few rinses I'm gonna give it one more after this And I must say, it does look like pretty clean silver at this point. But I have a fair amount of experience melting down silver um, recovered from cementation and cleaned up this way. And it just really doesn't look clean when it's melted. It's, it's not shiny. It's got a film on the surface that doesn't come off. It's not borax because it doesn't come off of boiling and dilute acid. You know, basically what that film is, is impurities in the crystal structure of the silver being forced out as the silver solidifies. Now if we were going to do a proper experiment here, we would need a control. So I was talking about dividing this stuff up into two batches and doing one with hydrochloric acid and one with sulfuric acid like my viewers say I should we should have a control where nothing gets done to it and it just gets melted down but I've already done that I've already you know have a lot like I said I have a lot of experience melting down cement silver so I know what that looks like you'll just have to take my word for it so I'm just going to divide this up uh, between two different beakers and uh, we'll try cleaning it up with some acid okay here's our as clean as I can get it cement silver and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put roughly half of it in this other beaker I'm not too worried about dividing it perfectly in half. I just need enough for a comparison, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil one in hydrochloric acid and one in dilute sulfuric acid. Rinse the acids out. Again, more rinsing, yes, more rinsing. And then We'll melt down each sample and see which one makes a prettier bar. Now that may seem a little subjective, maybe it is, but I think a prettier, shinier bar actually probably equates to cleaner silver. Okay? So there's our two samples. Let me get them in the fume hood and we'll get some acids on them. Okay, I've got my two silver samples in the fume hood. Fortunately, I have two hot plates in the fume hood, so I can run two parallel experiments. Uh, I've added about an arbitrary amount of uh, distilled water to each, about 400 milliliters in each. I'm going to label this one HCL. And I'm going to label this one H2SO4. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some hydrochloric acid in this one. We're going to put some sulfuric acid in this one. We're going to give these a good long boil. And then we'll see which is cleaner. I also want to see how much silver the sulfuric acid dissolves. I've got a feeling it's going to dissolve at least some. Not too worried about the hydrochloric acid dissolving silver. Don't think that's going to happen. So how much acid do I want to put in? I'm thinking fairly dilute. So I'm going to put about 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in there. And then as for this, I'm thinking at the most about 50 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Alright, so this is going to give me about 20% um, solution acid over here. And it would be about 10% over here. And you say, well, these should be the same. Well, I know the sulfuric acid is going to dissolve some silver. 
But I think, you know, a 10% solution should be adequate to dissolve out any copper that's in here if it will dissolve out copper. All right? I'm not 100% certain that either one of these is going to dissolve out the residual copper. We will see. Okay, so. I turn the fume hood on before I start making fumes. Put about 100 milliliters in here. That's about 100 milliliters. Turn the heat on. Get it boiling. All right, and over here, grab this stuff. I want to clean this silver up, but I don't want to dissolve it away too badly, so we're only going to put a, about half as much sulfuric acid in here. And then I'm going to stir it up really good, so it's not lingering down there on the bottom, concentrated and dissolving the silver away. sulfuric acid will dissolve the silver away. I am going to bring them both to a boil. I was thinking about just doing the sulfuric acid warmish, but I'm going to bring them both to a boil and we'll go from there. So They're both stone cold, so this is going to take a while. Oh, that one's a little warmer after dumping the acid in. Okay, but this is going to take a while. Well, I just had a thought. I'm only getting my uh, 10% concentration if I top this off. Do a full 500 milliliters like I did Oops, over there with the uh, other one. So, otherwise, it's a little more concentrated than I was aiming for. So, okay. So now, we're about where I want it. So, let's let it continue to heat up. Okay, both beakers have come to a nice boil. This one started first, the sulfuric acid one came to a boil first. I don't know if it's a difference in my hot plates or just that this was hot already from putting some sulfuric acid in it. But it came to a boil a few minutes before that one. So I'm just going to let these go, probably for a good 15-20 minutes at least, and then uh, shut them down. Now, my eyes might be deceiving me, but I do believe this one is a little bit blue, just a tiny touch blue. I'm not seeing it over there. Could be, I don't know. We'll see. Just gonna let it boil and then we'll see what we will see. Okay, I got distracted with another project. So these have been going for about a half an hour. Now I'm gonna turn the heat off on them. And the sulfuric acid one, I'm gonna pull off the heat and over onto the bench. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it. All right, so what I want to do with this stuff is I want to immediately pour the liquid off. I don't want it to stay on the uh, silver. Because if we have dissolved some silver and made silver sulfate, it will come out of solution as soon as this stuff cools down. And I don't want to contaminate the silver with the silver sulfate. But I want to test the liquid to see if it does have any silver sulfate in it. Whoa. There's our nice clean silver. It should be clean now. And I swear this has a slight blue tint to it. So I think maybe we got a little bit of something out of it sure copper. Give this a bit of a rinse. Some distilled water.
and I will rinse both of these much better later but I just wanted to get this liquid off of the silver quickly so it doesn't have a chance to dissolve more silver than it may have already dissolved. Not worried about the hydrochloric acid dissolving any silver, that's not going to happen. Okay, so I'll set that liquid aside and let me get the, uh, the other one off the heat so it'll quit boiling. So they both had about the same amount of boiling time. And then uh, we'll start rinsing both of these. Now unlike with the sulfuric acid one, I have to say, I don't really see any tint to this liquid. It does not look like it has any color to it. Now, if uh, we were converting any copper to copper chloride, it would probably be a little green. Maybe I'm just not seeing the green tint. It might be slightly green. Maybe the blue of copper nitrate is showing up better. I don't know. Or copper sulfate. Maybe the blue of copper sulfate is showing up better. This copper sulfate is very blue. Okay. So I'm going to give both of these some rinses. Stilled water. And I will continue rinsing them until they come out pH 7, which is basically neutral. Then I'll know I've got all the acid off of them. So that'll probably take a few rinses, even though I use dilute acid. They've already given that kind of a rinse, so I will concentrate on this one for now. I have to say, that is some very nice looking silver in there. Of course, it's really hard to tell until you melt it. But that is some seriously good looking silver. Okay. Let me give this one a rinse or two. I'll go find my pH paper. And I'll test them and see if they need some more rinsing. They might. I'll go get my pH paper and find some more rinse water. Alright, I've given both of these quite a few rinses, but it may not be enough yet. Let's check with some pH paper. See, that's still a little bit acidic, the hydrochloric acid, or the, the sulfuric acid one. Let's see about this one. Just a little bit. So they're both still a little acidic. So they both need some more rinsing, which is exactly what I figured. It takes a lot of rinsing to get these back down to neutral. It really does. So we'll just rinse them some more and then test again. Two, three might be enough. Two, three more might be enough. We'll see. Okay, there's been a few more rinses. Let's measure it again. I have to say this looks like super super clean silver in there. I see lots of shiny crystals in both of them. Very sparkly. Oh just ever so slightly acidic. And I would say this one is neutral. So I'm going to give this one one more rinse and I would say that one we are there. All right. And it's interesting, this is the one I did 20% acid, this is the one I did 10% acid, and this is the one that's taken more rinsing. 
to get it down to neutral. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to call that neutral. It was very close before. It just had a slight tinge of uh, orange on the litmus paper. So I would say that these are both done. Alright. So now what we need to do is just melt down a sample of each and see which makes prettier bars. Now as for this stuff what am I going to do with this stuff? Well, I want to know if there's any silver sulfate in there. And the easiest way I can think of to figure out, because this is still quite warm, is put this in the fridge and get it really cold. Because silver sulfate is not very soluble at all in cold water. So if there's any silver sulfate in there, we may see a precipitate. So I'm going to put that in my lab fridge and leave it for a while. And we'll see if any precipitate forms. Okay, it's time to melt this stuff down. I'm going to start with the stuff that was uh, cooked in sulfuric acid. I'm going to measure out about 8 grams of this stuff and we'll melt it down and make ourselves a little bar and see how it looks. That's just a hair over 8. Okay, so we'll go with that. Get this in the crucible. Tamp it down a little. Well, there's something going on. Every siren, this part of Florida seems to be going on. Okay, let me uh, reposition the camera so you get a better look at what I'm doing and we'll get started melting this down. Okay, let's get this melted down. out of the crucible. I'll have to collect that later. But this isn't so much about weight. It's about how this looks it's melted. Consolidating into a nice bead. That last bead in there. One. So that's the uh, one that was boiled in sulfuric acid. I must say it's quite shiny. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to measure out while well, everything's good and hot. Measure out 8 grams of the stuff that we boiled in hydrochloric acid. And we'll melt it down and see how it looks. Okay, the first one I did is in the fume hood, boiling in some dilute hydrochloric acid to take the borax off of it. And we'll measure out 8 grams of this stuff. That's a bit much. There we 
go. And then we'll melt this stuff down. Now some of you may be thinking I wasn't using enough oxygen. And well, here's the thing about silver. It will absorb oxygen from your flame. And if you get too much oxygen in it, that oxygen gets expelled when the silver solidifies. And you get these big spikes and you get a really rough surface. So I really wasn't using all that much oxygen with my flame. You're correct. So that one's kind of nice and shiny too. It's going to be hard to tell which one's prettier. So I'll let the, uh, the one that's in the fume hood boil for a little while, get cleaned up, then I'll pull it out, I'll put that one in, and we'll compare them side by side once they've both had a bath in, uh, in boiling dilute hydrochloric acid. Alright, see you then. Now as for this stuff, I just pulled this out of the fridge, it's been in there, it's good and cold, just above freezing. Uh, I'm starting to sweat. There is a little film of something on the bottom of the beaker. Not very much. It's a pretty transparent film, but there's a light film of something there. Uh, so there's obviously not a whole lot of sulfur sulfate in here, or it would have crashed out of the solution once the temperature went down. But there still could be some silver sulfate in there. So I want to try and convert it to something even less soluble in water and see if it comes out of solution. So I'm going to put some muriatic acid in here and see if we can convert any of that to silver chloride and see what happens. Well, yeah, see it go milky white? So there is some silver silver dissolved in there, which I was afraid would happen with the uh, with the sulfuric acid. Let me get a stir rod. But really, it's not as much as I thought. I mean, that is that is really not much silver dissolved in there. Okay, that is not a very opaque cloud of silver chloride. So we do have some silver was dissolved by the sulfuric acid, turned into silver sulfate, dissolved in the water. Not enough to crash out of solution much when it was cold. But of course, once I put some uh, muriatic acid on it, Converted it into uh, silver chloride, well, yeah, crashed right out of solution. In fact, we'll let that settle and see just how much uh, silver chloride is in there. It doesn't look like there's much. 
So, what have we learned from this exercise? Well, if I'm honest, and I'm looking at these two silver bars I've poured, there's not a lot of difference between them, okay? There's really not a difference in the luster, seriously. Um, they look about the same, okay? Now, clearly, the uh, sulfuric acid treatment did take something out of there because the liquid turned blue, all right? So we got something out of there. I'm certain it's copper. It probably made copper sulfate. Copper sulfate's very blue, so it just took a little trace of it and turned the liquid blue. But we also dissolved some of the silver as silver sulfate. And uh, that one with the liquid too. And here if I stir this up, you know, I converted it into silver chloride so we can see better that it's there. But uh, it's not very much. I have to say we did not dissolve nearly as much silver as I thought the sulfuric acid treatment would do. So that's a plus. It gets something out of the silver and it doesn't dissolve that much silver, but it does dissolve some. So is it worth the loss? Especially if you're doing this on a large scale. I don't know. I don't know if the hydrochloric acid treatment got anything out of the silver or not. The liquid stayed clear. Um, it's possible we got some copper out as copper chloride, but the color just wasn't strong enough for me to detect. That's possible. Um, like I say, I really can't see much of a difference between these two bars. They both look pretty good. They both look better than what I would get just from melting the cement silver without giving it an acid boil. I'll give it that. They both have much nicer luster than I would get by just, you know, melting the stuff straight from uh, cementation. But, for comparison purposes, here's a little bar of silver that I got from the uh, lion sugar reduction of silver chloride. And I gotta tell you what, this is Hands down, a lot shinier, has a lot better luster than either of these two. Again, it's subjective. I'll give you that. But, you know, I'm thinking that the lion sugar method is giving me cleaner silver than just boiling the cement silver in uh, either hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. Yeah, this one is hands down the shiniest the most lustrous of the three. So I'm thinking that uh, the lion sugar method from silver chloride, well rinsed silver chloride, you know well rinsed after the lion sugar method, I'm thinking is probably the purest silver I can get short of using an electrolytic cell. Which we may explore in the future. But for now I'm thinking this is some pretty darn pure silver right here. It sure looks like pure silver. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. How do you purify your silver? What methods do you use? What do you think works best? What am I doing wrong? I get a lot of comments about what I'm doing wrong. So yeah, let me know. And let me know if you're interested in seeing more silver recovery and refining videos. I know I've concentrated really heavily on gold in the past and kind of, you know, glossed over silver. but. Silver is a nice byproduct when you're dealing with e-waste. It's out there. It's easier to get. And uh, it's not that hard to recover from e-waste, too, along with the gold. It's just not as valuable. So I haven't concentrated on it so much. But let me know if you want to see more silver recovery and refining videos. And I will accommodate you. Because it's fairly easy to really accumulate a lot of silver from e-waste. There's a lot of e-waste that has silver in it. And I'll show you some in future videos. Uh, it's just a matter of whether is it, is it economical to recover or not. Because, like I said earlier, silver is not nearly as valuable as gold, but you still got to use some expensive reagents sometimes to get it, like nitric acid. So it becomes a matter of economics, not a matter of difficulty, really. It's pretty simple. So anyway, I hope you found this video at least a little bit interesting, educational, informative, whatever got you thinking. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. But if you found this video at all interesting, give it a like, give it a, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Check out my 
second channel, Electric Geek 64. Uh, there's interesting stuff going on there if you're all interested in electronics or retro computing. So check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.